Hello, first grades, Mr. Hunter here, and I am here with your history lesson for today. You should have your history book. Get it out for me, please, and you're going to turn to page 88. Um, we're doing a little bit of a review um, because, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we were going through all the different con countries that we learned. Um, last time we were talking about Italy, we were talking about Denmark, Germany, and I know that with the past couple of weeks, we've had some time away where we haven't had the uh, the same you know, we haven't had the same lessons each and every day. And so I just want to review some of this. So we're going back and we're going to talk a little bit about two countries that we may have mentioned uh, some, but not all the way. We're going to talk about Kenya and we're going to talk about Egypt. All right. These are two really cool countries and they are in are on the continent of. Can anybody tell me? It starts with the A. Not Australia. Is not Asia, it's Africa. Yes, Africa, Africa. So we're going to Africa today. So I want you to put your imagination caps on. I want you to put your thinking caps on. And we're gonna go down. First, we have to read our vocabulary words. So we look at, we look at uh, the top of page 88, and that's what page we should be on. Um, here are some of the things that we're gonna be going through today. Kenya, Egypt, pyramids, continent of Africa, Lake Victoria, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mr. Hunter's favorite animal. Mm, we'll see if you know it. And then village versus a city. And then we're gonna teach you something, how to say hello in Swahili, all right? So we'll get to that point in just a second. But first, our first vocabulary word is Nairobi. Everybody say Nairobi. Nairobi is the capital city, which is located in Kenya, in Africa, all right? Everybody say safari, safari, all right? Everybody say antelope antelope everybody say cheetahs cheetahs say hippopotamuses that's a big word so we're going to say it again hippopotamuses now let's see we can combine a little bit of language with that how many syllables does it have hippopotamuses that's one two three four five six syllables have you ever heard of a, a, a six syllable word before if that's your first, it's okay. That's a really big word. So hippopotamuses. Hippopotamuses. All right. And then we're going to say Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, you said that too fast. All right. Mount Kilimanjaro. All right. So we're going to look at this. All right. So Kenya, these are some facts I'm going to read to you from my book. As you see me reading off screen, it's not in your book. So just listen carefully with your thinking caps and your, your ears open, ready to learn. All right. Kenya is a warm place to live. And it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing about Kenya because the equator runs right through the middle of the country. A small part of Kenya, the lower half, is part of the, or it's next to the Indian Ocean, which guess what? It is the warmest ocean in the world. What's the coldest? The, the Arctic, right? The Arctic. The Indian Ocean is the world's warmest, warmest ocean. Now, in California, especially here in Los Angeles, we have a certain type of tree that grows or that we have that, that's outside all the time. People love taking pictures of them. They're pretty high. They're on the beaches. They're in some of your neighborhoods. It's called a palm tree. Everybody say palm tree. Well, in Kenya, they have palm trees as well, but their palm trees are a little bit different because they're called coconut palm trees. Everybody say coconut palm trees. Well, coconut palm trees, they grow along the beautiful beaches. So our palm trees, they don't have any fruit on them by the beach, but these have coconuts hanging from them. They're beautiful. The beaches are sandy, and it just looks amazing. And then guess what? The cities in Kenya, they're pretty much just like ours. They're modern. They have a lot of uh, amenities, the buildings. They have the same things that we have, but most of the people in Kenya, they prefer to live in villages. And I'm gonna to explain to you what a village is versus what a city's like compared to what we think in our, in our world over here in LA, all right? And then a lot of those people, they wanna live in villages, you know why? The main job, the main thing that a lot of people do in Kenya is they're farmers. So they wanna live out in a place that has a lot of land, a lot of grass, a lot of place where they can actually plant and get, excuse me, get the crops, because you know what they do? They sell the crops and that's how they make their money. All right, and then at the bottom here, we say, what do Kenyans grow if they're farmers? They grow a lot of corn, but not just, not just regular corn. They call their corn flour, and they mix it with the water, and it's called ugly. Not ugly, say ugly. 
If you want to know how to spell it, I'm going to spell it right here for you. All right. Put an apostrophe there, and you go. Parentheses, let's just say. That is how you say ugly. Say ugly. All right. And then they usually add some vegetables and they have some meat and some fish with it sometimes, but usually they just eat the ugly, which is their cornstarch and flour. All right. So let's look at the first, first part. It says Kenya. As we travel down to Kenya, we may see Lake Victoria. It is Africa's largest lake. And for you guys, I'm going to actually put a, a clip a YouTube clip in the bottom of this video so you see what Lake Victoria looks like. Our plane, when we land in Africa or when we land in Kenya, we're gonna go to the capital of Nairobi. That's where their big airport is. Nairobi is the capital of Kenya. And there are some places that it has in that city that we'll be able to enjoy, all right? There are many large parks in Kenya where animals can run free. And guess what? People like you and me, we can go to Kenya and we can go on a safari trip to see the animals. And if we go, we can't forget to bring our cameras or some of us have our phones which take really nice pictures so we can see all of them. So we have some safari parks in, in California. We have them in the United States. But if you were to actually go to Africa, their parks are entirely different. They're huge, they're so big, and they have way more animals than we would ever have in our places here in California and in the United States, all right? So what are some things we learned already? Our plane, if we land, we're gonna land in Nairobi and Nairobi is the capital of Kenya, okay? The largest lake in Africa is called Lake Victoria. And you're gonna see a video of that in a few seconds here. Uh, when you look at the, after the video, you watch. And then people, they come to Kenya all the time because they wanna go on safaris. They wanna go see the wild animals. And you'll learn about Mr. Hunter's favorite animal in a second. What else do they eat? They eat the corn flour, this cornstarch, and it is called ugly, ugly. And then one thing that's pretty cool is that they have those coconut palm trees. Don't forget about that. Remember, coconut palm trees. So you think of Kenya, think of coconut palm trees, you think of Ugali, you think of the safari parks, and you think that you're gonna to go to the capital and that all the people, not all of them, but most of the people there, they work on farms, so they live in villages. All right, so now when you're going to the safari, what do you have to watch out for? I mean, you have to watch out for a lot of animals, but let's look at right here on page 89. It says you have to watch carefully for the antelope. The elephants, the giraffes, the lions, the cheetahs, the zebras, so many different types of birds, ostriches, flamingos. Near the water, you might also find crocodiles. And what's that, what's that six syllable word? Hippopotamuses. Those are really, really big. Does anybody know how much a hippopotamus weighs? Well, I was waiting to see if you guys wanted to answer. A hippopotamus, if it's a male, it can weigh between 3,500 pounds and 4,000 pounds. And a female hippopotamus weighs 2,500 pounds up to 3,000 pounds. So 4,000 pounds for a grown male hippopotamus. Wow. You want that to sit on you? Not at all. Even getting on top of that, you would feel the weight and how heavy it is. God created a hippopotamus just like he created the tiny little squirrel, the tiny little ladybug. Isn't that amazing? That, that's amazing to me. So we have the facts. We have that people visit Kenya to photograph wild animals that roam freely through the national parks. And most of the largest animals in the world, they live in Kenya. So some of the biggest animals that you can think of, like the giraffes, like the hippopotamus, like what else? The elephants. Yes, all of these animals live in Kenya. Uh-oh, cheetahs. Everybody say cheetah. I think we might have come to the part where Mr. Hunter's favorite animal. The cheetahs, you guys may have known this already, but cheetahs are the fastest animals in the world. And they also live there and can run up to 60 miles an hour. And just because you guys are watching this, I'm gonna put a video of a cheetah running as fast as it can in the bottom. So follow the link to the cheetah, and then you'll also see the video for Lake Victoria, all right? There is a hotel that is in Kenya that it's so special. It's called the Tree Top Hotel. Why is it special? Well, it's a hotel and it's a restaurant and it's built inside of a large tree in the middle of the safari park. So you're eating, you're sleeping, and when the sun rises, you can look out in the middle of the park and see all these different animals around you. Now, is it safe? Yes, they have to make it safe so that you be protected from the wild animals. But do you get some amazing views that you would not be able to get anywhere else? Yes, you do. And then I have to tell you this, this is a really, really special hotel. So do you think you have to pay a little bit more money to stay in a special hotel? Yes. So if Mr. Hunter wants to go this summer, I'm going to ask Dylan and Eliana and Jeremiah and Sam, I'm going to ask all of you to combine all of your money and pay for my trip because I know you guys 
you guys have a lot of money. So I, I can't wait to go on a trip thanks to you. All right. So I'll be coming to get your money when we go back to school. All right. Now, there is a mountain that is in Kenya. And we're going to read it. It's right after hippopotamuses. It says, with hippopotamuses. It says, when we leave Kenya, I hope we will see Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the highest mountain in Africa. How high is it? Well, again, I was waiting for you guys to answer. The mountain is almost 20,000 feet high. It's actually 19,000. And I want to make sure I, I say the exact numbers right. 19,341 feet high. Wow. Climbing up there, when you get to a certain level, there's almost not enough air for you to actually breathe. So if you wanted to climb, you would have to need an air and an oxygen tank to climb that high. That's just like climbing this famous mountain called Mount Everest. But Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in the, in the country of Africa, or the continent of Africa, not even this in the country of Kenya. It's in the continent of Africa. All right. So I have a question for you. Just a little review. If you were to fly into Kenya, what is the name of the capital city that you would fly into? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an N. Mm, if you said Nairobi, you're right. Okay. Now, do people in Kenya, do they prefer to live in cities or villages? Okay, you guys got that right, villages. But why do they prefer to live in villages? Because they have to sell food. But if you're selling food, that means you had to grow the food. And if you're growing food, that means you are a well, a farmer. Yes, a farmer. So they live in villages because most of them are farmers and they want to sell the fruits and vegetables to make their money. And you would fly into Nairobi. Now, the tallest mountain in Africa, I just said it, it's called Mount... K oh, it's right behind me. Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay, so you guys already know that. All right. Now, if you are leaving Kenya to go back to Egypt, there's another place. Egypt is actually north because Kenya is down in the south of Africa. We're going to go north. And we're going to go north up to Egypt because we're going to learn about some pyramids. We're going to learn about the Egyptians. And I have a few more facts I want to talk to you about. All right. OK, so you're going to turn the page. But before you turn the page, I do have a question for you. And it's a question that comes from my book. And I think it's a really, really, really good question. So I want you to listen and listen clearly. Although there are people living in other countries, just like in Egypt and in Kenya, and they don't have as much money as some people like, like we do, like here in America, we may have more toys, we may have more cars, we may have better jobs and make more money. Does that mean that those people in Kenya and in Egypt are less important than we are? D does God care about us more than he cares about them? I mean, we have more money, we have nicer things, so he has to care about us more, right? No, no, that is absolutely not true, and you guys are right. He does not care about them more or us more, he does not care about them less. He cares about all of us equal. And I want to read to you what it says. These people are not less important to God. God loves them just as much as he loves us. Money and things, guess what? We think they're important, but God doesn't think they're important. They're not important to him. God wants to look at your heart. Everybody knows where their heart is? Put your hand over your heart, just like you're taking the Pledge of Allegiance. He, he looks at your heart, and he wants to see if you love him, if you're going to put him first, and if you're going to be obedient to him. Those are the three things he's going to look at if you love him, if you put him first, and if you are obedient. It does not matter about your money. It does not matter about your cost. So just because we're reading about people that live in less fortunate situations does not mean that God loves them less or loves us more. Just want to make sure you guys understand that point. All right, let's turn the page. We're going to turn to page 90, page 90 and everybody say Egypt. Everybody say Egypt. All right, we have some words at the top, vocabulary. The first word is pyramids. Everybody say pyramids. Then you have bury, say bury. Then you have ancient, say ancient. Ancient means like it's old, it's not new. It's, it's in the past, it's like a really, really, really cool uh, artifact or piece of history, all right? Uh, say great sphinx, sphinx, it's a hard one. Say great sphinx. Then you're gonna say Egyptians. You say Suez, 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 and then you say Mediterranean. And last but not least, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to say Indian Ocean. Everybody say Indian Ocean. All right, so I'm reading again some, from some notes that I have. It says, most of Egypt is dry, sandy, and desert. How many of you already knew that? Well, you may not have known that, but by looking at a picture of Egypt, all you see is really the desert. And you see some tall, tall buildings called pyramids. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that. 
It's dry and it's desert in Egypt because very little rainfall falls throughout the year. Almost all of the Egyptians, guess what? They live near a river called the Nile River. Everybody say the Nile River, all right? The Nile River, right, it flows from the south to the north. So that's down, going up, vertical, vertical from south to north. And when the Nile River floods, it spreads good soil onto its banks and Egyptian people are able to plant their crops on the fertile soil. So when the Nile is just regular, it doesn't flood, there's not much planting that goes along. But when the Nile floods and it overflows, then the Egyptians can actually plant their fruits and their vegetables and other items that they need to be able to eat and survive and to also sell if they need to, all right? Cairo, everybody say Cairo. Cairo is the capital city of Egypt, all right? And um, there's a place where the pyramids uh, are located and the Great Sphinx are located. It's not far from Cairo, all right? Most Egyptians, they live either in large cities or just like in Kenya, they live in villages. So sometimes you want to live in a city, but sometimes you like the smaller um, location of a, of, a, um, of a village, all right? So we're reading from the top. It says, from Kenya, we will take a bus to Egypt to visit the pyramids. Who wants to go to the pyramids? I can't wait. I would, I would love to go. The pyramids are huge stone structures. They are square at the bottom with four smooth sides and a point at the top. They were special places to bury the kings of ancient Egypt. So in the old times in Egypt, they didn't have normal uh, places for funerals for people when they died. They used these special pyramids for the really, really high ranking um, pharaohs. And the pharaoh was like a president. It was the person that was in charge of everything. And so they only buried the top uh, officials like the presidents, like the top people in the military, they were all buried in these places called pyramids. The Great Sphinx, everybody say Sphinx. The Great Sphinx is near the pyramids in Egypt. It was also made from rock, and it was the head of a man and the body of a lion. As you can see, it's circled on your page. The reason why they had this Sphinx is because the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, the ones back in the day, in the past, they believed that the Sphinx would guard the pyramids. So you had the pyramids and you have all the bodies of people that have passed away and that are presidents. These are top ranking people. So to make sure nobody does anything to it, they built this other statue, the Great Sphinx. And the Sphinx, they believe, was going to look and protect all those people that were inside those tombs. Now, what are the special places in ancient Egypt where all the, the special, uh, special people were buried? Like the presidents, where were they buried? So the pyramids, right? Pyramids weren't just for show. They weren't just something that they built. They were actually tombs and places where they built, uh, built for people that were special kings. Now, what kind of, uh, what was it called? What was the structure called that has the head of a man and the head of a lion, I'm sorry, and the body of a lion, right? Do you know? The Great Sphinx. And I apologize, I'm reading it and I said it wrong. It has the head of a man and the body of a lion. So if you pointed that out, that Mr. Hunter was wrong in saying that, you were absolutely right to do so. All right, the last page we're gonna look at. It says, it says, next we'll visit the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal. The canal was dug many hundreds of years ago so that ships could sail from the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean without sailing all the way around the continent of Africa. So guess what? This water that you see, it wasn't there before. They had to put it there and make this canal so that boats could get through. Because if they didn't, it would take them almost two or three days to go all the way around the continent. Now it takes just a few hours, okay? So this was dug underneath so that ships could bring equipment, they could bring uh, supplies, anything to, to Africa, especially in Egypt, all right? Now let's think about this. Do you think that many people could live in desert places if there were no nowhere to grow crops? No. Because guess what? People must have crops. They must have food to live. And is Egypt closer to the United States or is it closer to somewhere we talked about last week, Italy? If you guess Italy, you are correct. The United States is far. We're across an ocean. We're so far away. But Italy is in Europe. Europe is a continent that's right next to Africa. And so it's closer to go from Egypt to Italy than it is to go from Egypt to the United States. All right, this is your reading lesson for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna click, put those links in the bottom of this YouTube video. So I hope you guys are able to click on Lake Victoria for Kenya and you're gonna see the safari. And then I have something I wanna show you with the pyramids as well. 
All right. Love you guys. Talk soon.